Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of previously unseen clips from this series of Would I Lie to You? Joining Lee Mack tonight, Bob Mortimer, Emma Bunton, John Richardson, Debbie McGee, Rory Reid, Joe Brand, Daisy May Cooper and Henning Vane. And joining David Mitchell tonight, Alex Jones, Olivia Coleman, Aston Merigold, Diane Morgan, Lucy Porter, Dion Dublin, and Sean Williamson. We'll begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And John is first up. At home, if I need to remember to do something, I will put my slippers on the wrong feet and won't swap them back until I've done it. <laughs> David's team. I think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think we can go straight to an answer. <laughs> so, John, was it the truth? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, so, you put your slippers on the wrong feet to remind you that you've got something to do? Yes. As a, like, a knot in the handkerchief? Yes, I stopped carrying a handkerchief around the house in sort of the mid-19th century. Yeah. <laughs> I still carry a handkerchief. I won't get it out because, of course, it's encrusted with snot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, girls! <laughs> you not just use your phone and put an alarm on or something? You'll spot the generation gap here. Look at... <laughs> Quite often set an alarm on my phone. I've got an alarm <laughs> set on my phone now to remind me to put the bins out later. Yeah, but that's kind of different to what Aston's doing. Yours is sort of an early onset tactic, isn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you leant forward. So happy then as well. I set an alarm on my phone. <laughs> Let's go back to Mr. Cool with his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> What sort of thing would you use it to remind yourself to do? Well, we have moved house recently, so I very often... <laughs> remind find... yourself not to go back to the old house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be unpacking something and I'll think, oh, I'll put that picture up and I'll go up to get a hammer from the uh, hammer room. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way up, I'll see something else that needs doing. I'll think, oh, I'll put that washing away. And then by the time I'm putting the washing away, I've forgotten about the picture. Paint a picture for the, for the viewers who are wondering what sort of slippers you wear. Uh, they're a sort of blue... They're a sort of corduroy slipper, David, you would like. I mean, they're <laughs> almost sort of... They look the same. It's just sometimes I put them on the wrong way by accident. And I think, what have I got to do? And I think, oh, no, I've just put them on the wrong foot. <laughs> what are you thinking, David's team? What do you think? I would, I would say it's true. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good so system. It's so plausible, isn't it? I'm going to adopt this. I'm thinking of swapping my shoes now to make sure I don't forget about the bins later. <laughs> so, John, truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh! <laughs> Diane, you're next. Possession. Right, there's a box underneath your desk, Diane. Um, yeah. Could you open the lid, read the card out first and then take out the item? Every time I lose a tooth, I put it in a pot. This is that pot. <laughs> right, that at least teeth. Now, I'm confused because my children are watching this. Why didn't the tooth fairy take them? Well, they did some. Because if you were to put that under your pillow, you'd get about 700 quid. <laughs> <laughs> are there teeth in there now? Yes. Okay. So why did you decide to start just collecting them? You... Something to do, isn't it? <laughs> so can I come and get it? You can go and get it if you want to, yes. All right. You lost weight, you look great. <laughs> As rehearsed, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Can I take the lid? Yeah. I feel like a very grumpy fairy. <laughs> There's a quid under your pillow, love. <laughs> That's wow. huge! That's that a big one. one. That's a cat's like a fang. This one's quite decayed. Yeah, they're not healthy looking teeth. No. She's from Bolton. Oh. <laughs> Can you talk us through them, Diane? Do you remember which one comes from where? Um, well, they all came from my mouth. <laughs> I 
appreciate that, but in which Can parts of the mouse? Can you explain this one? Because that is just... What's, that's which that's one's like a that? dinosaur too. It's very long and you, sharp. Well, you know that it's not just the top of your teeth that you can see, they go down into your gums. Oh, yeah, I went to school. <laughs> what scares me is if this isn't true, whose teeth, teeth are they? <laughs> If I find out the producer of this show has pulled out his children's teeth <laughs> for the sake of this show, I will genuinely say, well done, mate. <laughs> you can probably buy children's teeth online. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rory? Is she telling the truth? I think she has to be telling the truth because she doesn't strike me as a person warped and deranged enough to collect other people's teeth. No, I don't think... I don't... No, no, no. <laughs> explain how this show works. <laughs> if she's not telling the truth, it means that this is as new to her as it is to us. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm lying because they're not my teeth. <laughs> All right, it's true. It's true. I uh, hope it's true. OK, true. He's saying it's true? Yeah. OK, Diane. Truth or lie? It's actually true. Oh! Why would you do that? <laughs> Bob, you're next. My first taste of fame was when the local newspaper dubbed me the Cockroach King. David's <laughs> <laughs> team. Uh, what was the newspaper? My local. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was called the South London Press. Are you from South London? <laughs> I was in the lead-up to the headline, The Cockroach King. Why were you in the public eye doing what? I was a solicitor at the time, mm -hmm. and I sued the local authority. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. of cockroach infestations in the council houses. Yes! <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> and, of course, it was that kind of style in court that won the day. <laughs> <laughs> we settled outside of court, actually. <laughs> but the... <laughs> <laughs> I had to change the names, cos these are real legal proceedings that we're talking about. Right. Well, why does the fact that it's real legal proceedings mean you have to change the names? Because I don't think it's fair to say that, let's say she's called Barbara Lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> lived in the horror of cockroach infestation. Were you representing Barbara Lighthouse? I was, yes. She'd engaged your services. She's engaged my services. I visited her property. Must have been ages to get to the top. <laughs> <laughs> there were Egyptian cockroaches. So I had an idea, right? <laughs> I said, I bet this is bad for your mental health, living with cockroaches. And I... Um, took them to the magistrate's court on a private criminal prosecution under the Public Health Act. Why are you counting every letter in the same? <laughs> are you working out as to charge her? Well, <laughs> you mentioned the Egyptian cockroach. The Egyptian cockroach, How yeah. many? I wasn't aware there were different types. They live in the concrete. Um, and they can actually live off the concrete that the buildings are made so of. Eat so the, the concrete. concrete. Yep. Bob, they, they, they li they've got some hard cockroaches. <laughs> they live in the concrete. They nip out to go behind the fridge or the cooker. <laughs> or to turn the light out. <laughs> so, Did so, these... What were the size of these Egyptian cockroaches? They're long and thin, slip right in. <laughs> That's my profile on Tinder. <laughs> it is odd the cockroach king would suggest a champion of the cockroach rather than an opponent. Or, or the in fact, their leader. Yes. Did you lead the cockroaches away like the Pied Piper? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was is I got an expert from uh, the University of Cambridge um, called Broccoli High Kicks. <laughs> Again, I've changed his name. His brief from me was, can you in any way argue that this is contrary to public health? He confirmed it, um, went to court. It's all coming ever so clear now. <laughs> <laughs> we went to court. 
Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie Omelettes was the housing officer. <laughs> You haven't changed his name, have you? <laughs> and what was she called? Barbara Lighthouse. <laughs> Barbara Lighthouse brought a, a clear jar of the cockroaches with her and poured them over Ronnie omelettes. <laughs> right? Of course, yeah. he was very frightened, didn't know what to do, oh. at which point Barbara Lighthouse said, I think I've made my point. <laughs> You know, to the housing officer, yeah. this is what I live with. <laughs> so the council agreed to rehouse. Next day, the cockroach king. <laughs> right, what are you going to say, Dave? What do you think? It's that bizarre that only Bob could make it up, so I think that's true. Mm. That doesn't make sense. If you're, saying, <laughs> if you're saying only Bob could make it up, only then Bob he could have made it up. That, no, only Bob can make it up like that. Right. So convincing. Yeah. So we're in Real trouble, stupid. aren't we? <laughs> Were you saying that if anyone else had said it, it would definitely be true because they couldn't have invented it. But one person who's saying it is also coincidentally the only human who yes. could also have invented it. it. Yes. Awesome. What a terrible set of circumstances. <laughs> you think it's true? <laughs> Do you think it's true? Uh, yes, let's say it's true. Uh, we're going to go true. OK. Now, Bob, truth or lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> Emma, you're next. OK. Uh, when I was Baby Spice, I mainly just ate baby food. <laughs> David Steve. So, you, you only ate baby food? Yeah. So, okay. I moved in with the girls. We lived together. Yeah. And we didn't have very much money. So, I used to eat baby food. What That's were the other girls eating at this stage? Beans on toast. Um, corned beef and rice. Corned beef and rice? Who was eating that? Who do you think? I'd go for Mel B. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, I just eat it. <laughs> it would never occur to me to eat baby food. Um, How did you discover that? It was either my nephew or, or a, a, a cousin, a baby, and I must have just tasted it. What were you... You were stealing baby food off a child. <laughs> I still do it now with my own kids. What were your stools like? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that question's ever been asked before on this show. I'm not going to answer that. Well, but because, because you having... You have to answer Thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because Please. having been a, an active father with nappy changing, I know... Oh the effect that that stuff has on your system. <laughs> I think there's a trajectory. What you're talking about is when a baby goes from just having milk to having the first baby food, there is a marked change in the nature of the stool. <laughs> Basically, it turns into normal excrement, which is not very nice from being extremely, you know, the most pleasant of the excrements is the excrement <laughs> of a baby before it is weaned. I'm not saying it's an actively nice substance, but of all the excrements, it's definitely my favourite. I'm going to just say, David, on behalf of the team, thank you for getting us past Sean's awkward thank moment. You. <laughs> if you like, I'll rank all of the excrements. <laughs> I would prefer horse to dog. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> no one puts dog on the roses. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't you relax for a little bit? <laughs> so, what are you going to say? I think yeah. it's a lie. What do you think? I think it's false. We're going to go lie. You're saying it's a lie. Right. Emma, truth or lie? Um, unfortunately, it's true. Uh, oh. <laughs> David, you're next. <clears throat> I can walk from my house to the corner shop on only one gulp of air <laughs> and regularly do so just for fun. <laughs> These two. Oh. How far's the corner shop from your house, David? S four miles. <laughs> No, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's yards. And when did you take the gulp? Um, about earlier that day. 
Is it before the moat or after <laughs> the moat? It's, it's as I clear the drawbridge. As draw the drawbridge has landed, <laughs> yeah. you've stepped off the drawbridge. Absolutely. Appro approximately how many houses are there from you and the corner, to the corner shop? shop? I think 25. <laughs> but these are just estate workers' cottages. <laughs> <laughs> But so there's a... And pass them very, very quickly. <laughs> Why did you go to the shop and think, I'll take a gulp of air and hold your breath till you well, get there? It started on a day where I had had a problem uh, with serial hiccups. One way of getting rid of hiccups is to hold your breath, but I was also going to the shop and I was trying to hold my breath as long as possible. And is it not an awkward moment when one of your neighbours passes you and says, Morning, David, and you go, Morning! <laughs> 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 Yes, and on occasion I have given up on the holding the breath uh, in, in order to greet someone and seem like a normal human. <laughs> Why don't you demonstrate it for us? You want me to walk back and forth across the set holding my breath? Yes. And that, in your view, would achieve something. <laughs> I won't be able to talk you through it, of no, course. Of course not. We will observe breath, you. Which is one of the many reasons this is such an ill-fated idea. <laughs> shall, we be, shall we be your wife and child? Well, they're well, at home. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Or, I mean, you could be a grandfather clock and a piano. <laughs> you? <laughs> you're not part of this. <laughs> OK, so you're saying goodbye to, 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 to Lucy, your lovely wife, and your boy who shot up Dion. <laughs> Right, off go you go. That. You're heading Bye. to the corner Bye. shop. And fa Bye. Farewell, <laughs> beloved family, for I must go to the shop. See you, Dad. Yeah. All right, you get to the front gate. <laughs> Morning, David. <laughs> Glad you never talked to me. <laughs> I'm stuck here with a baby and you're parading around the street. <laughs> Your Hello, flies David. are undone. Hi. <laughs> He said my flies are undone, and I just exhaled and went, are they? So, you know, that's, it's, the experiment is completely ruined. <laughs> my flies. So, what are you going to say, Lee? I don't. I don't believe in the shop. No. What? <laughs> I'm imagining that David lives in the countryside somewhere. Yeah. No, I've been to David's house. It's, it's a ghetto. You <laughs> The bit he's uh, missing out is that when he gets to the shop, all his crew are hanging around outside. Yeah. <laughs> ah, doing your graffiti again. Can I play? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's true. I don't think so. Well, no. I'll go with my team and say that's not true. You can say it's a lie. David, truth or lie? Well, it is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Henning, you're next. I, I once presented a woman at work with what I now realise was a deeply inappropriate gift. <laughs> Let me see. What was the gift? Uh, <laughs> dustpan and brush. And what was the context in which you gave her a dustpan and brush? It was her birthday. <laughs> And oh, what, no. where were you working? Uh, that was uh, the company I was working for before I left for Britain. And what did they do? Essentially, they tried to bundle the demand of golf clubs. Oh. They, oh, tried they tried to, to what? <laughs> bundle. So they wanted... So not golf club as in a stick, but a golf club as in the whole thing was 18 oh, holes right. and facilities. Yes. And, and you did, they did what to them? Try to bundle it. <laughs> you know, that's a company that tried to bundle 18 old golf clubs. <laughs> you know, when you run a golf club, you've got certain needs. You need balls for the driving range, you need flags for the holes and whatnot. And obviously, the manufacturers, they uh, overcharge you. Whilst if all the clubs come together and buy. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm only speaking on behalf of the nation. <laughs> I <don't... laughs> I think I'm getting there. This was a company that organised... ..organised separate golf yeah. clubs to act as a consortium That's in order to buy golfing equipment more inexpensively. That is That so... is exactly, concisely the business plan. Exactly <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and what was your role? Uh, Chief bundler. <laughs> Uh, trying to recruit new members to the consortium and went round to golf clubs for a jolly and then said, uh, how about you need 
A flag? <laughs> How much you, uh... it, so, it sounds ever so yeah, slightly exactly. like a sort of um, a, yeah. like a mob protection <laughs> racket. It sounds like you turned up and go, what a shame if something were to happen to this flag. <laughs> Oops, oh. it snapped. <laughs> Was it particularly difficult um. selling the bunkers? <laughs> genuine question. It's a genuine, genuine interest. <laughs> and why, why did you think that a dustpan and brush would be an appropriate present to start with? Because we were... Uh, the day before, she was saying how much cleaning she had to do at home. <laughs> and then I was in the supermarket, and then I thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that, that would be a nice present. <laughs> Could you reenact the face of the gift recipient when she opened the present? Do you want me to be you and you be the gift recipient? Yeah, give me. I'll, I'll do my best to you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I have seen you trying to sell the flags in the clubs, like me. <laughs> <laughs> you do such a great job. <laughs> we are bringing together so many of the different golf clubs in Germany. <laughs> We should get a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> but instead, I got you this. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Alex, when, you, when yeah. you're there on, on, on the one show, do you, do you exchange gifts? Do you and Matt Baker? Do you, uh... <laughs> it's me, Matt Baker! Do you, do you um... <laughs> has bought me a variety of gifts over the years. Last year, a cup and saucer. <laughs> it's one of those you'd put in a posh cupboard in your kitchen. There's only one ever, and it's in that one. It's nice, I always think, in your house to put a few things aside for people to pack away when you're dead. <laughs> in my house. You put them there, you sort of think, yeah, I won't be, I won't be touching that again, but one day, when I'm dead, someone will have to deal with that. <laughs> all right, well, David, what do you think? I think we'll all die one day. <laughs> um, Is it the I, truth? It's true. I think it's true. Well, I think we, we think it's true. It's true? Yeah. OK. Henning, was it true or was it a lie? Of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you're next. I was once favourite to win an athletics event. <laughs> but ended up coming last after an incident oh. in a toilet cubicle. Oh. <laughs> uh, David's team. Well, right. OK, what was, well, what was the athletics what? event? It was a javelin. Uh, uh, the javelin, and, and when were you entered into a javelin competition? Uh, when I was at school. How old were you? Uh, I was about 16. And you were the favourite? I was. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> I could chuck it a long way. How far? <laughs> how far, roughly? Probably... For God's sake, make it less than 110 metres, which is the world <laughs> record. <laughs> Give yourself a fighting chance. 111 metres. <laughs> uh, I would say about 20 or 30 metres. Were you also good at running fast? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I think that was a genuine question. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I see get the mean momentum running. to throw it. Yeah, yeah, OK. I did actually, for a short time, hold the 100-metre record for our school. That was because I was having a fag behind the bike sheds and I heard the dinner bell. <laughs> What was the incident in the toilet that yes, handicapped yes, your performance? Yes, yes. I was preparing for sports day, the afternoon, so I went in the toilet to have a fag, <laughs> and... <laughs> I had a box of matches, and I struck one to light my fag with, didn't blow it out properly, put it back in the box, and the box exploded in my javelin-throwing <gasps> hand. Oh! Wow. So this is a story about a serious burn. <laughs> yeah, so I had yeah. to throw the javelin at sports day with my left hand. Well, Johnny, what, what do you think? How does this strike you? I think it could be true. And you think it's... True. OK, true. You were saying it is true. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Joe, truth or lie? It is true. <laughs> Uh, Lucy, you're next. I once continued with a first date, even though I'd been sick in my handbag. <laughs> Lucy, when was this? Uh, last week. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was, um, I was about, I'd say, 22, 21, 22. Uh, and why had you been sick in the handbag? I got, I got very drunk. We'd gone to an art gallery. It was like a private fancy one, and he'd said, let's go... He was a bit older and posher, and he said, let's go to this art gallery. Uh, how much older and how much posher? <laughs> <laughs> and how much married? <laughs> he was very... He was terribly, terribly... He didn't have a chin, and uh, he was... Now, did he literally not have a chin? <laughs> <laughs> it's no wonder you vomited into your handbag. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd got really drunk, and then he, he said, oh, I'll take you home we were on the bus. The man who's a lot posher than you took you home on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd normally have had to walk, so it was not great. <laughs> How big was your handbag? It was quite... It was a sort of novelty uh, leopard skin fur bag that I'd bought from a, a sort of student market. Oh, God, it was in a thing. fur bag. Was he, it... was he starting to go, are you sure that's dead? <laughs> At all. How did you be? How were you sitting? You must have been sat next to him. Yeah, I was sat next. But I think he was looking out the window or something. <laughs> no, were you going home? Are you going? Where were yeah, you going? Yeah, he said I'll walk you home. Yeah. And I walked, and I was aware that there was dripping. Oh. <laughs> but he didn't seem to notice. Well, he was older. Maybe he was leaking too. <laughs> I think he wanted to come in, and I said, no, I've just been sick. Oh, you told him, then? Yeah, and then nothing happened, and I never never saw him again. But presumably, your keys... Oh, my word, did you have to reach yeah. in...? <laughs> Wouldn't that have been great? Would you like to come in for a coffee? <laughs> OK. <laughs> and get to the front door. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I've actually got to go home. <laughs> I don't think men's standards are that high, are they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you thinking, Debbie? Well, I just I haven't quite got there yet, because if you're sick in your handbag over all your stuff, yeah. it is going to seep out a lot. See, first, she said it was dripping out, and he yeah. was, it would be tr leaving a trail. It's smelly. At least he can find his way back to the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> Road. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you going to say? True. Bob thinks it's true. True. I'm going to go with my team and say true. And say it's true. Lucy, truth or lie? It is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we've time for on this special edition of Would I Lie to You? Thank you for watching. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.